Okay, here we are, Big Data Applications and Analytics. Jeffrey Fox, your instructor in the Data Science Curriculum of Indiana University. And here we're now doing Internet of Things and Sensors, section and unit. And we're going on to the Industrial Internet of Things, a pretty interesting concept which has been pioneered by General Electric. So. This is the first lesson on the Industrial Internet of Things, I, I, O, T. Here we are. And we summarize a sort of a general introduction to that and, some sur and a survey and expectation from industry. It comes from an analysis done by Accenture. Okay. So I like all these terms, intelligent machines, brilliant machines, software-defined machines. So these are sort of trying to capture in a short, thought, I mean, jarring um, phrase, what, what's meant by the industrial internet of things. That it really consists of a whole set of software controlled and software emitting messaging emitting data emitting uh, devices which of course could be making things or running things they could be engines or, or robots or what have you and they are, they are basically tomorrow's industry and general electric for example uses them in jet engines in their transportation work oil and gas and healthcare those are just areas where GE has a major emphasis, and uh, we, we actually pointed out right in the motivation uh, section of this uh, course that uh, GE claims his engines give more data than Twitter uh, in a given per time period. And here is a nice GESoftware.com is a good source of information about the industrial Internet of Things. Uh, they've developed software which is not Ter at least I don't actually know so much about it, except it's got a good name, pre predicts, predict, presumably because it predicts things. And they have a software division that uh, has grown now to 700 people in three years. So that's reasonably impressive. And of course, they placed it next to the center of the world in Silicon Valley. Shows that the rich get richer, do they not? And I meant here the rich being the Silicon Valley community, which is the how the you know the source of the internet revolution, with the old areas like um, North Carolina, Texas, Austin, and Boston, quite a long way behind in this area. Although they have, of course, very competitive academic research activities. So the, you know, for GE, there's identification of jet engine faults. Managing traffic or examples of the applications. They also have nifty uh, um, examples in uh, railroad railroad uh, managing, which which is part of their transportation uh, efforts. So they think of the challenge has been taking the world's population, seven billion people, fifty billion things, and merging them all together as we merge the consumer and industrial internet. So. That's uh, their grand challenge. And it involves physics, because you're predicting in transportation, predicting where things will go. Obviously, you need to understand you know, if you're applying them in health, you have to understand medicine. You need to automate uh, the information flow. That's what Apache Storm and, and uh, Kafka are doing. You need to make predictions from the analytics. And you need all the standard tools like uh, HBase and Hadoop and things. So it has um, old data it's accessing from databases, has new real-time data, and the analytics are gonna depend on the industry. You're gonna do different things for transportation than you do for health. And it's obviously got an investment here is likely to have huge impact across all industries. And the industries that adopt the industrial internet of things is likely to be the ones where your investment in, in their stocks is gonna pay you off. So you better find out who's doing it. Well, so we now have a sort of subset of the industrial internet of things, or maybe it's a, an associated to that, which is the enterprise internet of things. 
And that just basically is those things which are integrated with enterprises. <coughs> so this includes, for instance, office buildings or factories and drone delivery systems and for, for the education enterprise, classrooms and for the dining and exercise enterprise, restaurants, which are feeding back in real time comments from customers and on the food and on the waiters and things like that. So you can, um, you're meant to be taking, you need to look at your enterprise. Ha ha, I have over there a vacuum cleaner. We will put, add a thing to that vacuum cleaner so it becomes a brilliant vacuum cleaner or a software defined vacuum cleaner. So we need to do every. We need to take these inexpensive sensors, which are down to less than a dollar each, and manage the lighting, the um, air conditioning, the energy, the security, our inventory, and everything else that we need to manage, and connect them all via these devices into our enterprise network. And here's a nifty picture from Cisco showing this happening in an office building. And this is just um, um, where we get the lighting, the heating units, the uh, fire control system, uh, the air quality, air handling. These are all intrusions, surveillance, card, I mean, the reader of who enters the building and everything is all integrated together so that uh, you will know. Who's in there? Why? How long they're in there? Where they're using energy and water, and when they're buying a Coke or a or a, a three M, I mean a <coughs> M and M candy and what have you. So that's the enterprise Internet of Things. So here's this survey by Accenture, <coughs> which is aiming to try to quantify the industrial internet and the Industrial Internet of Things. And uh, you know, there are lots of big numbers here, um, including 15 trillion global uh, GDP by 2030. And uh, whether it's uh, 15 trillion or 1 trillion will partly depend on how we do in these modern developments. But the opportunities are in many areas. Aviation, obviously, more we know from unfortunate recent uh, crashes that one of the troubles with those crashes is those aircraft were not actually feeding much data back. At least, and that data wasn't even being looked at. So there's some problems there. But um, it appears that you could have actually had the cloud monitoring the behavior of these aircraft and alerting far more quickly and precisely what's gone wrong. And um, that, that seems actually rather trivial to do, in my opinion. Oil and gas, uh, well. Um, not only we not only need to develop new uh, oil wells and things like that, we need to make them intelligent, so we know how to manage them and their distribution of their of the what they drill. Transportation, well, that's all uh, types of transportation from trains to buses, cars, etc. Aircraft, they all need to be automated with Internet of Things. Power generation, there's a smart grid. As power distribution, really, any manufacturing we saw from, well, we know robots are used in manufacturing. Healthcare has lots of applications that we'll study individually, and of course, the materials, mining materials, is also likely to do better with monitors telling you what's happening. And this analysis pointed out that not all big data is equal. Maybe Twitter is the most famous big data, and because they are giving it away and making it easy to use. However, it may not be as valuable to look at uh, rather silly tweets from people as opposed to uh, uh, the jet engine squeaking away, telling me it's telling you it's made a problem or the aircraft is nearing a stall speed and what have you. And um, the claim is there's more business value on a size adjusted basis than business value per, per sensor. Than in other type of business value per um, byte of data in uh, industrial internet than the consumer internet. <coughs> so they did a survey which covered healthcare, which we'll look at separately, and the other industry, 
and they looked at the industrial internet and what the industry executives thought about it. And the, the response is not terribly surprising. These surveys are always biased. If we come in with a survey saying, we're surveying how innovative your company is. And then question number one, is your company innovative and using Internet of Things? You say, mm, of course I'm really innovative. Yes, so it's rather, actually, um, it requires a, some challenge to actually say, no, I, I think Internet of Things sucks. It's a stupid waste of money. We're deliberately not investing in that area. That's not, well, few people have the ability to make such statements. But obviously security is a serious problem. We had the, uh, what's it called, Stuxnet as an example of the what happens with machines which have viruses uh, get into them. Um, we have, certainly we have the usual NIH syndrome and everybody does their own thing. And it's very difficult to integrate, but, there's, but to actually get the right answer. Remember that picture of the office building? We need to integrate the elevators with the um, access control monitors and things like that. So we understand much more clearly what's going on. Uh, but that's not so easy if uh, your elevator comes with a built-in uh, Internet of Things uh, system, which is incompatible with the Internet of Things system with your lighting and so on. So this has some urgency, and here is the link for this uh, Accenture study. So in the study, they have anecdotes. I assume the survey had the opportunity for people to actually add value. So it's um, pointed out that uh, at least over the last 50 years, railroad, railroads did automation. But now everything that can be automated is automated. And now they need to make the automated intelli automation intelligent by linking the automated systems with all their sensors and put more sensors and um, make good decisions. And the one thing you can, one here's one, actually let's jump to this bullet here, which is sort of related of unplanned downtime. Uh, for instance, airlines use, lose $45 million a day from unplanned delays. And so using, making better use of the industrial Internet of Things allows you to reduce the downtime and do better planning to rescue yourself from um, downtime. So Johnson Controls is, an, is a leader in the industrial Internet of Things because they build control systems and actually I should note that sensors and the whole theory of sensors and the use of sensors and the Internet of Things is closely connected with this engineering the field called control systems because these Internet of Things are all meant to be fed into each other and that's called control. So actually you can learn a lot from control theory and control theory can learn a lot from the Internet of Things. And Johnson Controls is just one of the examples of the companies that um, really is um, a pioneer there. In fact, it's not going to be a company in that area unless it is a pioneer in this area, because it's the future of their field. So here is a, a survey which, um, here's the first question, what are the proportion is, um, and this is actually in big data analytics, not particularly in IIoT, but uh, the claim is for these industrial Internet of Things. Big data analytics is closely focused on IIoT. So here we have 51% uh, of the uh, of the uh, responses say that 21 to 30% of their technology expenditures in in um, um, Big data and 22% of people actually are bigger than that, and only 27% are less than that. And here's a tiny number: 3% of the responders have less than 10% of their expenditures in big data, their technology expenditures. And then the question is: Is it going to be uh, decreasing? Answer is zero. Stay the same. Uh, modest 24% increase. 76%. Onward. Here we look at this uh, by um, industry. So we have orange is top. Green says big data analytics on the top three priorities. Uh, purple, the top five, and blue is really not interesting. So 
here we have these, um, well, you could sum the green and the orange, and we can see that uh, power generation is the largest. It's third because it's actually top priority only in 31% of the time. But within the top three is, is a huge number. Um, so uh, it's 94% if you sum these two categories. So then we have aviation and wind are similar. Wind a tiny bit irrelevant fraction bigger. Notice wind does have a few people who think it's irrelevant. Power distribution, pretty conservative industry, but even that industry, only 84% uh, within the top three or top. Uh, oil and gas, 3%, no way, Jose, 9% uh, um, within the top five or and, and below the top three, so numbers four or five, and here you have, so you basically have would the, the only one, maybe mining is the most least impacted by big data, but even that's pretty impacted. 79% uh, within the top three. So in the last slide of this set, uh, we have this question about, about uh, in the manufacturing area. Um, and uh, actually other areas, telecom. What are the early adopters? And we find industrial machinery is top with 18%. Automotive, the connected car, consumer and industrial electronics, aerospace, 15%. And of course, consumer packaged goods, groceries and things are sort of behind when metals and mining aren't so, aren't so behind. Healthcare is um, below the top, it's sort of hanging in there. So this is. Um, this survey, which is of course, like as I noted, like all surveys, biased, adds weight to the statement that um, the industrial internet of things and big data is very important for industry. Uh, so that's the end of this uh, section on I IoT and sensors. Thank you very much. This is Jeffrey Fox ending this lesson. Thank you.